What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. Today's episode is going to be all about tomato leaf curl. If they curl up, if they curl down, if they curl at the top, if they are curling at the bottom. We're going to talk about it, we're going to explain it, why it happens, what's causing it, what you should be worried about, and what you don't have to worry about. We're going to talk all about leaf curl, so that is today's video. Let's go. The first type of leaf curl is one that generally does not have to cause any concern at all, and it's the most common, and that is upward leaf curl. We actually have some on our plants here. Very normal, very common, and it's not a detriment to the plant whatsoever. It's one that you generally do not have to worry about. It is actually caused from a response to an environmental condition. It might be that it's too dry, it might be that it's too windy, and it also might be that it's too hot. Too dry, too windy, and too hot can cause the leaf to curl. And this is because it's actually a, stimul it's actually a stimulus or uh, stimulant from, uh, from the environment saying that if it does not change the shape of the leaf, it will risk dying from stress. So if it's too dry, the undersides of the leaf are what respire water. And when the, uh, when the, the leaf is respiring too fast, it will curl to reduce the amount of surface area so that it's not respiring as fast because it's already lacking water. So this is one thing that it will do. Now this is not necessarily that there's a shortage of water, it's just that the plant realizes that it's running out of water and it's not being able to uptake water as fast as it's losing the water. So there might still be water in the ground and that's why all these new leaves are perfectly fine and normal. It's just that the older leaves are saying, hold up a second, we need to conserve water. So it's just a water conservation trick. Now again, this can also be caused from too hot of temperatures. The sun is the energy source. The leaves are like the solar panel. If they're flat, what can happen is they can absorb too much sun's energy and they can burn. So in, during uh, hot summer days, the lower leaves, the more mature leaves, will actually begin to curl. And this is just a response from the, hot, the sun being too hot, and it will simply curl up like a little tube to reduce the amount of surface area that the leaf has. Plain and simple. And then the third reason is because it's too windy. Generally you see this in early spring when it's very windy and there's not a lot of leaves on the trees. We plant our garden out really early. The wind is typically the strongest in the spring, at least for here in, uh, in Michigan, but it could be different for you uh, where you're at. But regardless, strong winds can actually blow across the leaf and they can dehydrate the leaf. So again, another surface area trick that the leaf has is to curl. This is completely normal. It does not hurt the plant whatsoever, and there's no effect to overall growth. In fact, the, the plant will continue to produce fruit, flowers, and growth. It just kind of protects what it has, the foliage that it has, so it does not cause unnecessary stress. And that's why a lot of these older leaves tend to be the ones that are curling. The newer leaves coming out, they're not curled, they're not stressed, and, uh, and they're just normal. And that tells me that it's just a natural response to the environment, which is normal. We don't have to do anything as a gardener. The only time you'd ever have to do something is if you see a, a leaf that is curled like this and you open it up and there's like um, almost like a, a cocoon in there, that means you have a moth or some type of, uh, of insect making a webbing in here. Generally, this will be something like um, you know, uh, a type of caterpillar and they can chew on your leaves, they can cause stress from, from that, and it can also um, damage the leaf because they will, uh, they'll poop in here and they'll spread around a lot of fungus and, and bacteria, and that can spread to your leaves. So as long as you don't see a caterpillar making a nest inside here like that, a lot of times caterpillars will do that. They'll actually curl the leaf up to kind of make and seal their home as a way of protection from predators. And so they'll do that with your leaf. And if you don't see that on your plants, you're generally fine. Uh, well, you are fine, actually. You're not generally fine. That's the only time that you'd be concerned is if you saw a, uh, a caterpillar. So that's upward curl. The next type of curl that I want to talk about is curly top. Now, curly top is one that we've done several videos on, and it's actually a virus. This is something that you should be concerned about. Now, you shouldn't be concerned that it's going to spread to the rest of your plants. Prime example is I have one right over here, and uh, I'll show you that right now. I'm not worried about it. I'm just letting the fruit that's on the plant produce and come to fruition. It's not spreading to the other plants because it's a virus. It's not like a bacteria or a fungus that can spread. 
It's uh, actually internal, it's systemic. It's inside the plant and it's spread by the leaf hopper. The leaf hopper is a little green uh, winged insect that comes and bites your plant and some of them have this, uh, this virus in them, some don't. So even if you have leaf hoppers around and they bite your plant, you might not get curly top virus. But it seems like about every year, if we're growing about 30, 40 plants, one to three will have uh, curly top virus by the end of the year. It's a natural thing, it happens. When it does happen, you just say, oh well, move on. The plant stops growing. It is pretty much rendered dead at that point, but you can still get fruit off of it. The fruit's totally fine, and the seeds inside the fruit is totally fine as well. The curly top virus will not spread into the genetics of the seed. It's just a virus that, that affects systemically the plant. All right, so this is curly top virus. As you can see, here is a healthy, here is a healthy tomato top. Here is one that has curly top virus. You'll see that all the new growth is very stringy and kind of stunted and spindly. This is curly top virus. It happens every single year. Again, it cannot spread from one plant to the next. It's just systemic. It's inside this plant here, and it's because it was bit by a leaf hopper. Now again, the, the, the growth will stop. It will essentially stunt this plant. It will stunt any future fruit production, but all of the fruit that's on this plant are totally fine. They'll continue to ripen up and grow just fine. And the plant will attempt to produce a lot of side shoots. That's one of the other side effects of uh, curly top virus is you'll see a lot of these other little offshoots kind of branching off here as suckers. Because the top is stunted, it's actually a stimulus, or it's a stimulant much like uh, clipping the top off, it will say, whoa, we can't grow any more up here, let's try to send some side shoots. So it'll produce a lot of suckers, and it will do that to try to outgrow the, the virus. You can leave those suckers on and try to outgrow it. It is possible, we've done it before, but generally about 99.9% .9 of the time, this plant is rendered pretty much a goner once the fruit ripens and we get the harvest, we'll pretty much pull the plant out. The next type of leaf curl can be caused from a micronutrient deficiency. Now, a lot of people jump to calcium and magnesium thinking that this is gonna solve the issue. However, generally it's not calcium, calcium and magnesium that are causing the leaf curl. If you have a calcium deficiency, the first thing you're going to see is blossom end rot. The last thing you'll see before the plant dies is leaf curl. Same thing goes with magnesium. If the plant has a magnesium deficiency, the outsides of the leaves will begin to turn yellow and scorch, almost like sunburn. And as a last resort, the plant will start to curl to protect itself. This is, this is way down the line after these have already shown themselves for several months. The plant does not immediately start to curl its leaves. There are two trace minerals, however, that do actually cause leaf curl when they're in short supply, and that is molybdenum and boron. Molybdenum is my favorite micronutrient to pronounce because it's just a ton of fun to pronounce, and, uh, and boron. So these are generally found in lots of soil, but the problem with overworked soil and soil that's not properly amended with compost and, and uh, you know, really well-aged uh, wood chip mulch and, and leaf mulch and stuff like that is that it can become depleted over time. Also, if you're someone that is using like a bagged potting mix or, uh, you know, like just a commercially available bagged soil that's kind of uh, scraped topsoil from someplace else you can't guarantee the quality of, these are generally the times when you'll see these micronutrient deficiencies. Generally, and more often than not, it is not a micronutrient deficiency, but if you've already ruled out temperature, uh, you know, hot weather, um, drought-like conditions, or high winds, and pests like caterpillars, you can start to look for those, those trace mineral deficiencies. And like I said, it never hurts to apply, I've said this probably more times than I care to admit, it does not hurt to apply a fertilizer like Trifecta Plus or uh, like, a, like a really well-aged manure or a compost, something that's going to have some nutrients to it because it's not gonna burn the plants. If anything, it's going to help solve those nutrient deficiencies and help just check one more thing off your list. Um, generally, like I said, it's generally not an issue. I don't typically ever worry about it. If I do see it, I chalk it up to like wind, sun, and drought. But if you are concerned, throw some on there and it's almost, it's almost guaranteed that that will solve the issue because you just need a tiny bit of it. It's these micronutrients that play a pivotal role in plant growth, but there's often no, there's often no shortage of them because they're so, so minute. Also, another great thing you can apply are trace mineral supplement like azomite. We use azomite in the garden, and that's a great way to incorporate over 70 trace minerals into the garden, and uh, it really helps to amend those trace minerals that are sometimes void from even our modern day soils because, uh, you know, wind, rain, and erosion have washed and degraded a lot of our soils away. 
And if we don't uh, properly take care of our soil, like a good steward should, you know, leaving the soil better off than when we first found it, they can become depleted over time, even in the best of soils. So just take those things into consideration and know that those two trace minerals are ones that can in fact cause leaf curl, um, but it's pretty hard to diagnose, it's just the only thing. And the very final type of leaf curl is downward leaf curl. This is one that you should take action on and one that is definitely not normal to have in your plants. This is actually a response because of a lack of water and a lack of nutrients when it comes to root rot. So if you're giving the plants too much water or your soil is holding on to too much water, the roots can actually rot away. And when the roots rot away, there's no way for the plant to uptake water. So while you're giving it a lot of water or while you've had a ton of rain and you think there's no way my plants can be lacking water, in fact they are. The inner, the inner vascular structure is actually contracting down because it's not able to uptake the water. It's trying to fight off the rot to try to prevent the rot from spreading to the rest of the plant. It actually contracts the, uh, the vascular system of the roots and it chokes off the plant from water. That's why your, your leaves will typically curl downwards and begin drooping is because of that lack of water. They also can uptake nutrients. So that's when you'll start to see yellowing of leaves and the curling of leaves together because the yellowing of leaves is a lack of nitrogen. The, the, roots, uh, you know, the roots job is to uptake water and nutrients. And if there's less roots, there's also less water and less nutrients that the plant can uptake. So those are some things that you need to actually address is if it's getting too much water and it's curling downward, either reduce the watering and let the plant just dry out and heal. Or if it's because uh, you know, it's, it's too much rain, well, there's really not a whole lot you can do now but you can learn from that by adding some, some well-draining material into your soil to help the soil drain a little better. Maybe it's a little too heavy clay, um, things like that. The other reason why it would curl downward is because of a soil-borne fungus or disease. This could be like septoria wilt. This could be uh, like um, fusarium wilt. A lot of your wilts will also cause downward leaf curl. These are things that can happen in early season when temperatures are cold. And the way to eliminate that is by simply planting when the weather is warmer. A lot of gardeners try to push the envelope and plant as early as possible when temperatures are really cold and there's a lot of rain in the early season. However, this is when funguses and blights tend to uh, kind of uh, become most prolific and can spread the fastest. And so um, a way to alleviate that is just by planting later. You know, rather than planting as soon as you can, wait until the nighttime temperatures are at least in the, in the mid 40s and you should be well on your way to, uh, to having a really healthy plant that does not have any of those soil-borne funguses and, and diseases. So those are all the reasons, or most of the reasons, why leaves curl. I tried to hit all of them, but I probably forgot a few here and there that are super minute that you'll never come across. But those are the most common causes for leaf curl. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to throw a huge like up there. It's definitely a nice hot one out today. <laughs> Very hot out today, in fact. Uh, but we're enjoying it. We're having a good day. I hope this helps you guys out in the garden. And uh, if it did, again, throw a like up there, share with your friends if you think they'd enjoy it, and subscribe if you're not yet already. We've got a lot more content coming out, and I'm excited about every single time I get to bring the camera out and show you something new. So as always, this is Luke from the On My Gardener channel, reminding you to grow big or go home, grow some tomatoes. It is well worth it. All right, catch you guys later.